many of you probably don't know that I really, really enjoy history. And um, I've seen a lot of things going around about um, objective morality online. And especially, um, I mean, not with the religious, but with the um, bit of uh, Sam Harris's um, talk on TED, where he explains that science might come up with an answer for objective morality. Now, as many of you know, this probably wouldn't be true. And why it wouldn't be true? Well, the answer lies in history. If you really look further back in history, you will find that there were so many revolutionaries that thought they had it exactly right. But really, what it has succumbed to was chaos and violence and everything else. Now, is this right or is this wrong? It may be right in some senses, it may be wrong in some senses, but in my mind, it is wrong. Therefore, it is not right. And it is not wrong because it was right to one person and it was wrong to another person. Uh, many ideologies uh, sprouted up in uh, the um, history of China. Um, uh, the first emperor of China, which was uh, Qin Huao Jin Di, I forgot his name was, but um, I believe his first name was Qin. Um, he had this idea where he would rule, he would take over the seven dynasties of, I mean, the six dynasties of China, which included his own, which was the Han Dynasty, the Hun Dynasty, the Qing Dynasty, the, um, I forgot all the dynasty names, but basically what happened was that he overtook all of these dynasties and within overtaking all of these dynasties he had killed many people in in that following amount of time in order to create one whole which was China and this of course was his reality in his mind this was his objective this was his goal of what was right and what was wrong and he created this complex over his egocentrism that he was God and everybody else was wrong. And basically, it became that way when he became ruler, uh, the first ruler and first emperor of China. Because what he did was he killed off so many people and he betrayed his even his own mother and his own father figure, who was the first prime minister of the Han Dynasty, I mean, the second prime minister of the Han Dynasty, um, because they got in his way of his objective goals. Now, this also happens later on in the, uh, during the um, uprising of uh, the Red Army, during during uh, the 1900s, the early 1900s, which is about 1926 all the way up to um, 1969, I believe. Um, and this was, of course, done by Chairman Mao. Chairman Mao and um, his communist, uh, communist people, army, or whatever, led a revolution and they went against and they fought very many nationalists that were actually against um, his objective goals and this of course is also objective morality throughout that time until 1969 which was the period in the day of his death he was made to be a god and everything, everything he said and did was right but there, of course, was other people who believed that he was not right. And you know what happened to them? They died. They were exiled or they were killed. Most of the time, they were tortured to death or they were put into jail cells, um, not given any of uh, food or anything else like that. And what was this? This was all in order to create a society that was perfect and a utopia that was perfect and everything else like that.
That is why, in my own mind, there is no perfect government. I would like a socialist government, but that is not perfect. That is why democracy is the closest thing that we have to anything like that. Socialism has to deal with the economy being controlled by the government, but democracy is something totally different that only relies on the uh, people's thoughts. Um, there are two different uh, there are two different ideologies that came out of these two different uh, points of time that which were very part apart from each other in Chinese history. One was legalism, which means that every single thing that the king does or says is true, and um, anything that opposes it should die or should be destroyed. And a similar um, type of manifestation that happened during the um, era of Mao's reign was that everything should progress in what Mao thought was right. And anyone who went against his ideologies would soon succumb to a torturous death or something like that. So yes, there is no such thing as objective morality. And you could just see it from those two examples because anybody, anybody in the world with a religious or political or social ideology, it is true that somebody else out there has an opposition to what their ideology may be. The closest thing that we can get to anything like that, which is still not not totally for sure of a perfect ideology since there will always 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 be opposition to one person's ideology is a democracy and it is having someone progress in a system where everyone has a say even the minority and that is the end of my rant on objective morality.